And now I'm delighted to have Vinnie Perth is with us to talk us through what we've learned from the uh, opening eight games. I don't want to just talk about last night's game, Vinnie, really, because obviously it's hard to take too much from it. Maybe that's wrong. You, you, you tell us, was there stuff that would be, you could take away from last night if you were uh, involved in that backroom team, if you're managing that team? What's Stephen Kenny and the coaches thinking? Yeah, actually, I saw something there, or I, I feel good about this, or I'm worried about that. Um, I suppose, like, it, it's a different one because there's no doubt Stephen will be disappointed with last night, and you can hear that in, in his voice, and you can hear the way he's spoken. Um, I, I, I've said before that I believe things like B internationals are the way forward because people will sit on even shows like your own and say, somebody like Ryan Manning, for argument's sake, oh, he's doing this at QPR and he's playing here, playing there. Can we have a look at him? I think we got an opportunity to see the likes of Ryan Manning and Daryl Horgan we've seen in the last couple of weeks who's doing quite well. So it, it was an opportunity to see people. Unfortunately, the reason because of that was, um, you know, people injured, suspensions and COVID issues. So it's not ideal, but um, that's the only plus out of it. Um, the performance wasn't good. There's no doubt about it. But um, listen, it just looked a tired squad, mentally, physically, staff even looked tired. I think um, Connor Hurahan spoke brilliantly during the week about, um, and it's something that's lost. It's lost on, on social media, and when people put up smart, smart ass comments, it's lost. Connor Hurahan spoke about losing somebody to COVID. Um, his wife being pregnant and uh, there's COVID obviously in the group. There's no doubt about that. We've seen that. And these guys are living in hotel rooms. And um, I've been around the camp a lot over the years through, I've had friends who have been senior internationals. And particularly out in, say, somewhere like Port Marnock, you go out to the hotel, you'd have a cup of tea in reception with one of the guys, and you'd see players like, whether it was Damien Duff, Robbie Key, and whoever, meeting their families, uh, maybe their brothers, their sisters, um, nephews, nieces that they hadn't seen because basically the vast majority of our players live in the UK. And they've lost that little bit of enjoyment. Um, um, they're living in the rooms. You see not being able to sit around together or, uh, pro properly, I'd imagine, at, at dinner tables and stuff like that. So... It looks like it's just been a real strain. It looks like the three games in one camp is just too much. And uh, it all played out in the pitch. And ultimately, that's why you don't build a football team, because relationships make football teams. That's the hard part, really, because you want the team to bond. You want your philosophy to get in. You want to be able to just sit in rooms and chat with them and say, well, what, what, why do you think that didn't work? Or, you know, a training today, I saw something from you that I really like. Can we just talk a little bit about that or even uh, what's going on in your life or you're moving house or how's that manager working out for you and are there good coaches at that is there anything you're learning from them all that all those conversations that that social lubricant yeah. much more difficult over zoom much more difficult socially distanced much more difficult when you can't actually have three or four people together going yeah I, I feel the same yeah and listen we, we, we've spoken four or five times on Zoom, but I've never met you in person. So, I mean, replicate that into football squads, replicate that into business. It's The world is changing, and it hasn't helped this squad, um, and there's no doubt about it. Um, like, pe people don't see it. So, for example, if in training during the week, if Troy Parrott had scored a goal, um, Damien Duff or Keith Andrews can't jump on his back or create a little bit of banter around the goal celebration or... Um, if they're playing a five-a-side as a coach, you might say to the kit man, fetch a cup of coffee, pick one team, he picks the greens and you take the oranges and it adds a little bit of a, an edge to it. Like It's just small little examples of where you build um, and you make the guy buy you coffee in front of people and there's a bit of banter around it. It creates a team environment. Um, even... So when you see that and when you see... So when you add, say, Ryan Manning, a good example, use him again... Most of the, not most, but a lot of the players wouldn't have known a lot about Ryan Manning. And he didn't get a chance to sit with him maybe for a cup of tea or in around the breakfast table or dinner table. And then they're going out into an international and playing beside him and don't really know the guy. So all of that stuff isn't helping. Um, it's not helped. It's not helped build the team. Ireland needs to build a team. Um, needs to build a club team mentality about what we do. I think Wales have done that. Uh, on, on their gigs over a number of years. They've done it before under Coleman. 
Northern Ireland definitely done it under O'Neill. Scotland have, have started to do it. So um, we need time to allow this group uh, to develop. And that that's ultimately COVID and other issues. You, you see it even in the staff, like Alan Kelly deciding um, that it wasn't in his best interest to travel to Dublin. I mean, there's obviously a lot of fear at the moment. And um, as I said, people can say what they want on social media or they can throw as much mud they want. But even in their own lives, people are not going to work at the moment. A lot of people are working from home for safety reasons. Yet we expect footballers just to be able to uh, get on with it just because they're footballers. It's, it makes no sense. So I think we need to give a bit of, bit of breathing space at the moment. And I think the staff... The players will be glad to see the back of, of international football for a while. I could be remembering this totally wrong, but I have a vague recollection of a US Cup where a bunch of kids went over and played, and a few of them played really well, and then suddenly were in the Ireland squad and were never away from the fringes of the first team from then on. I have a, a vague recollection about it, a couple of them that happened too. Is there, is there any hope that maybe uh, Knight and O'Shea are those two, and, and maybe Parrott? And that's it now. They're in the squad and we expect them to get game time. Maybe not to start. And maybe Josh Cullen is another one. That those four, they were here. They played a game. Actually, they stood up under very difficult circumstances. Their personalities around the place were such that when the next squad is in and it's a 23-man squad, a quarter of it are these young lads. Yeah, and, and that's the work. There's a huge amount of heavy lifting done uh, for this squad. And people people will, will make the debate about... He's only a League of Ireland manager. I've heard it all. I heard on your show this morning some of the comments coming in. I understand them. Um, but, like, when when I looked at England highlights last night and you see people like Mason Mount, Foden, Rice, Grealish, um, Sancho, like, wow. England managed correctly. Could, that's the, well, they certainly have the next goal and generation on the way. They could win a European championship. We're not at that level, OK? But we shouldn't also forget the... Uh, we've an amazing, or sorry, a, a Premiership style back four: Coleman, Doherty, you know, Duffy, Long, Egan, Stevens. Really, really strong in that department. But what's ahead of that is actually exciting. We shouldn't lose that. Um, Parrot, as you said, Adam Oida, um, Malumbi, uh, Conley, Knight, uh, even Connor Coventry looks an exciting player for the 21s. So the um, Obafemi, Collins, does O'Shea. We've got like a huge amount of things to be positive about. We're never going to beat England. We're, the days are gone where Ireland go to England. We're gone for the foreseeable future. Go to Wembley and win games or uh, um, and compete at the very, very highest level. But what we what we have to do is we have to get away from where we were, where our midfield was just half volleying the ball over the heads and there was no structure to our team. We were given the we were given the ball back quickly. Uh, because with the players we have and the players we've coming through, we can be people around us. We can, we can. When we played Georgia maybe a year and a half ago, they had more possession than us in in um, the Aviva Stadium. We have to flip that back into our favour, have more possession, create more chances, and I think we will. So for me, the glass is half full, but at the same time, I understand where some of the criticism is coming. I just think we've got to be careful that. Um, in a world we live in now, COVID um, is is it's affected everything, and um, it was three matches in one camp is just nonsensical, and um, even like so, some of the injuries, some of the players going back to their to their clubs uh, from every international team. You see, Mo Salah is gone now for for Liverpool for a couple of games. Like it's just international football sh shouldn't be going ahead at the moment. Uh, what you're talking about there in relation to potentially not playing, not beating a, a side like England with a certain style of play, that sort of conversation is going to probably come up a bit over the next World Cup cycle, given Ireland are now a third seed and will have to play two higher ranked teams twice. David Myler was making the point earlier this week that Ireland have been easier to beat, easier to play against, I should say, uh, under Stephen Kenny than under previous management. So, Vinny, how did they get to a point where they get back to that level of grit while also maintaining the good progress they've made stylistically? Yeah, well, I, I, I listened to David and I, I agree with him to a point as in Ireland, I think he used the word need to play a little bit ugly at times. Um, that, and and we, we were all complaining about that. It, there's a balance to be found. The problem is, though, um, 
there's just been no consistency. We haven't created a team. There hasn't been players on the pitch that you could say, this is definitely Stephen Kenny's style. Yes, we've passed out from the back at times, maybe a little bit too much. Um, when I look, I seen a stat in the first 172 passes last night, um, only 32 of them were in the opposition half. So that's something that has to be fixed. But to be fair, how do you fix that when, you know, the team last night will not represent Ireland's starting eleven. It, it's it's a complete mixture. I think we would have seen in this window that great debate of uh, Coleman and Doherty playing on the same side if everybody had to be in fit. I think they would have used this window to, to have a look at that. So, um, look, who knows what way we can play until we know what players we have. We have a massive issue, and I said this a couple of weeks ago uh, to yourselves. We've players not playing football and. Well, by the time the next international match comes, you may find that some players are playing regularly. Like, for me, um, the point that David was making, someone like Malumbi in midfield would suit that. But will he even get into the Brighton squad between now and Christmas? We don't We don't know. Aaron Connolly is, you know, is set to take over as maybe, I don't want to use the word the next Roy Keane, will he get into the Brighton squad? He's been out of it since he signed Danny Welbeck. Will he get into it? We don't know. So we're, we're in a difficult situation. Um, but we do have to change. We are changing. People have to accept that because um, that's what they wanted. Now that the change is coming, we need to be patient and hope that our players get forced in football. That's first and foremost. And we cannot create a style until we know what players actually turn up. I think last night proved that there was no, there was, we had nothing about us last night for for obvious reasons. We weren't a team. One of the things we've been debating all morning, Vinny, is how Ireland's midfield is going to look for the next international break. I guess it's like picking lot of numbers at this point. It's very very hard to know who's going to be playing meaningful club football and at what level. But what's your gut instinct on that? Did we see enough from Jason Knight, for example, to make him a real contender? Well, yes, but but. but Again, and and I don't. I hope I don't sound disrespectful to people who look who follow the game, but but Jason Knight's been doing that for Derby for for a good while. He's he's worked with the twenty ones, and his part of his his part of development has been happening, and there's a structure there, and bringing people like Jason Knight through. So it's no shock to to a lot of people. Um, it's the same with Jason Malumbi. The problem we have is these people have to make the next step. So could I see? Uh, Malumbi Knight starting in midfield as a two in the next in the World Cup campaign. Yes, I can, uh, but they may not play football. And Conor Hurrahan may get back into the Aston Villa team. Jeff Hendrick may have a an unbelievable next six months at Newcastle, um, and therefore you wouldn't put Knight and Malumbi in ahead of them. So we're in a really difficult situation. But we we have to learn from the other home nations and uh, the other Northern Ireland. Wales, Scotland, the success they had was built on, on a team and they have very similar players and um, the difference probably for Wales is Gareth Bale with another assist last night. We don't have that star player at the moment but listen, it, it, it's a difficult one. Does does Adam Ida really kick on now at, at Norwich because he's behind um, a really good player at Norwich in, in, in um, um, the centre forward from Finland. So okay. who knows? Uh, yeah, Pukki, sorry, and I think he scored again. But who knows? We're, we're in a difficult situation. Does Troy Parrott go into the Millwall team and just just burn it up? And he, does he become our centre forward? And um, that's, that is our challenge. But I think the heavy lifting is done. I think just positives out of uh, the four, seven, eight games. But listen, there's no, there's no getting away from the facts. We haven't won one. We haven't looked like scored. Well, we should have scored a couple last night again. But we're, we're in a difficult situation. But um, we have to presume it's worth it because what we were seeing for the previous couple of years wasn't good. It wasn't good. And um, we may have to go after somebody like uh, the lap at Man City and um, say to him, you know, there's a huge amount of players ahead of you in that England setup. Come and play for Ireland. And we may need something like that to go away over the next six months or 12 months. But um, we're in a difficult situation, but I think we've got to be fair to the people in that camp. That was a difficult camp, and um, it looked it looked Ireland was just too tired last night, and mentally and physically, it was a game too far for them. Yeah, no, all great points. Always great to have you on. That's brilliant analysis. Thanks a million, many cheers. Thanks, lads. Thank you. Really